Alright, so my previous video on Sony Vegas Pro 10 was quite popular. It was a beginner's tutorial for Sony Vegas Pro 10, and I thought I'd continue on with the Pro 10 videos, and hopefully they'll do quite well. So this video is going to be talking about keyframes, and I've done quite a few tutorials on keyframes already, but um, surprisingly, the keyframing is a little different in Pro 10, so I thought that, you know, I'd make a tutorial for this version of Sony Vegas, so... Uh, make sure that you're using Pro 10 for this tutorial, it would be ideal. Uh, if you don't know what version you have, go up here to Help, About Vegas Pro, and then it'll say there. Alright, so I came up with this little example here. Um, just look at the video preview. Um, it's just a white background and a small black dot is just moving from left to right very slowly. And that is an example of a keyframe animation. So I'll show you how it works. Um, let me clear everything here, and we'll talk about it. Alright, so I went to my Media Generators tab. And I went to the solid color, and um, this was a very basic example, obviously. So I took a white background and then had a black dot, but I guess um, I'll mix it up here. Let's have a red background. So this red color will be our background, and we can change the color of it too if we want. Let's get this ugly color here. So here's our background, and this is um, going to be on its own video track. So we can create a new video track by just right-clicking and hitting Insert Video Track, or it's um, Control-Shift-Q, I believe. And now let's get our dot. I'm going to use orange, and I'm not going to mess with it. It's just going to be the default orange. Now you notice that when I put the orange color on top of the... I don't know what color this would be. Um, when I put the orange color on top of this color, um, all you see is the orange. They don't mix or anything, And um, even though that's what they would do in real life. But if I hit mute on this track, I will only see the other color. So you can do that with the tracks and change them. Um, solo and mute are like inverses of each other. If you mute this track, it's the same thing as soloing this track, so just keep that in mind. But uh, we're just going to leave these track options at the default. We're not doing anything here. So we have orange and we have, I'm just going to call it like teal. I really don't know what color that is. Um, so we have these two colors here. So I can go to my video effects tab and what I did for the example was I took a cookie cutter effect and hit circle but uh, I think I'll do it just the default effect and we'll see what we can do here. So I dragged in my cookie cutter onto my orange color and now I'm going to change the shape here to let's do a diamond and let's do size or no you can cut away section make the size smaller and there we go there's our diamond you can see it in the video preview and uh, we can also change this stuff to repeat X, Y, border it. You can do all these um, all of these effects. I'm just going to put a feather on it for now. But how would I move it from left to right? Um, over here, I can move it. So, you know, I have it at left right here. If I move it from left to right, maybe it would do that in the video preview. But no, it won't. And the... Um, what we need to do to get an animation there is do something called keyframing. So let's move this diamond to... Actually, let's just keep it at the right to keep it different. So we have our diamond at the right, correct? Well, what we need to do is place a keyframe for it to move. So in uh, Sony Vegas Pro 9 and below, the keyframes would be right here and stuff, and they still are here. There's a little button here that says Animate. makes it a bit easier to figure out. You hit Animate, and then this uh, control panel comes up. And now... Keyframes are very, very simple to work with. Basically, you have your playhead here, which indicates um, the time that your effect is placed at. And that sounds kind of confusing, but basically, it always starts at the zero mark, which is the extreme left. And then when you move it to, for example, the five second mark, here it says 429, so it's about four and a half seconds. Basically, whatever I change now that the playhead is here, the duration between zero and four and a half seconds is when the effect will take place. That might sound a little confusing, but trust me, once you experiment, when you experiment with it, it becomes extremely easy. All right, so playhead's at zero. What we can do is move it. Whoops. You take the playhead, and let's move it here. This is about two seconds, I think. And then what we do is we can move the diamond to the left. And sometimes you don't see it move in the video preview box, but trust me, it will. And as well as that, you can change the color or the size, make it a bit smaller. I'll repeat X. There we go. So you can adjust all sorts of effects, and the duration between zero and our new keyframe, which is this diamond here, um, the duration of that is when the effects will take place. So if we play it, you can see that, you know, 
it looked kind of ugly there because we weren't really paying attention to what we were doing. But our diamond moved from the right to the left. It got gradually smaller, and then it kind of screwed up at the end, but that's okay. So that's just a very simple example of keyframing. I'm going to delete my video tracks. So I'll show you something else. Let's go to something like noise texture. And uh, I do th this example in every video, so I'll try and make it somewhat different. Let's take lightning here, for example. So here we have our lightning. And if I just play it, it just looks like a picture of lightning because that's basically what it is. Um, but if we go up here to the generated media button, now we have all of our controls. We can change the color of our lightning. We can change the color of our background. You can do whatever you want. So let's have a no, let's have a black background. And I'm just gonna have traditional like yellow lightning like that. Now we have all these controls here, and just like with the other example, we can keyframe them. So we hit the animate button, and here comes our keyframes again. And now we can see more of the time. Um, we have zero, one and a half seconds, three and a half seconds, five and a half seconds, etc. So let's take our playhead and move it to one and a half seconds. And I'm going to take this progress in degrees. I'm going to click on the little, uh, you know, tab, th the little button, I guess you would call it. And then you can use your arrow keys and be very precise with it. So I'll just move it like 0 0.3. It's not going to look like it moves at all, but over the course of one and a half seconds, it will move somewhat. And there you see it. And then, of course, it stops because the keyframe was only set at one and a half seconds. And the clip itself is like 10 seconds. So if we wanted that effect to, you know, last for the entire clip, we would take this keyframe and we move it all the way to the end. And now our keyframe lasts for the whole video clip. It'll be slower, but it'll still last for the whole video. Do you see what I mean? So let's go back to our lightning here. And I'm going to move this keyframe to about uh, four and a half seconds. If you um, move the playhead, you can see the time here at the bottom underneath your mouse cursor. So here it would be five seconds sharp. So I'll put it there, which is exactly halfway. And it's actually like one hundredth of a second off or whatever, but it doesn't matter. So I have my keyframe there. So let's change the progress to be a lot faster. And we can change all this other stuff like amplitude and stuff. Um, in an ideal project, you probably wouldn't be doing effects like this, but it's fun to mess around with if um, you're a beginner. So I'm going to change all this stuff. And just to make it really smooth, I'll do a RAM preview. So you can see in the video preview what's happening. It's very, very basic, but it looks kind of cool. It's This is the kind of stuff that you want to do when you're trying to create intros for videos and stuff. Uh, so yeah. Alright, so this RAM preview is going kind of slow, but that's okay. I'll present to you one more example after this video, or after this example. Alright, so let's see what we got. Alright. Looks pretty good, I suppose. So, you can apply keyframes to literally any components of Sony Vegas. Um, media generators, text, effects, transitions. My phone's ringing. Um, just ignore it. To transitions, panning and cropping. It really doesn't matter. So, let's do one more example. Let's get a test pattern. Let's get this... Um, I'm just going to take the default one. And let's put it there. Alright, so here we have, you know, this... You see, you see this on TV all the time when something goes off air. Not that it matters. So we can go to our event pan and crop tool, and uh, here's our keyframes again. And we can do the same thing, in, like pretty much. So I can move this to the four second mark. It's the same thing. And let's pan it to the middle. Let's go right in on this green bar. And now all we need to do is play it back. And you can see it's really laggy because my computer is getting kind of old, but change this to draft quarter. Maybe it'll be a bit faster. There you go. So that's simple keyframing. And there's a lot of other stuff you can do. Um, there's different types of keyframes that you can click on your new keyframe and right click it. And you have all these different types like smooth and linear, fast, slow, hold. Um, all of them are kind of similar except for the hold keyframes. Hold keyframes are really um, different. And they're kind of advanced so I'll save that for a different tutorial. But uh, that this is extremely basic keyframing. So um, maybe you guys kind of get the gist of how it works. So um, if you're a beginner and you watch this tutorial and you think this is interesting, uh, open up Vegas and try it out for yourself. It's very, very easy to um, get used to. It's uh, actually kind of intuitive. You don't really need that many instructions to figure it out. It's really intuitive. But So mess around with it. 
And it's important to know how keyframes work because if you're serious about editing with, editing with Sony Vegas, it's important to know how to use keyframes. All right, so this concludes my 10,000th video on keyframes. Um, thanks for watching, and there will definitely be more Vegas Pro 10 tutorials coming up soon. Thanks for watching.